Hello everyone, I'm Susan and I'm from Inverness in Scotland and today I'm going to be working with my jelly prints and making them into beautiful bookmark designs like these. So if you're interested in following along and you'd like to learn how to make these, let's get started. Hello everyone, so today on my YouTube channel I was going to talk to you about finding compositions in your jelly print and in your paintings to use in other ways for instance in small cards or to make bookmarks with your prints or your paintings which um, were perhaps studies or you, or you don't feel like they're finished enough painting to sell as a or frame but you still want to get some use out of the, the painting. So this one for instance was um, a small landscape that I did which was, which was a panoramic shape and I've just chopped it into three art cards and by finding the composition using something like this, which is a, a viewfinder. So that's one way to use some use up some of your old paintings. Um, so you can so see this one here is a study I did. So you could find within that a composition that you liked and cut that up and use it different ways. Or you could take this is like my bookmark shape and find a bookmark design within that. I really like that long narrow shape but it's also a inspiration for maybe I'll do a bigger painting with like more vertical and just having these sort of shapes. So they're quite good for sparking ideas. I think I would get loads of bookmarks out of this one. <laughs> Every bit looks nice as a long narrow strip. Uh, I've got some paintings like this. I quite like to do abstract backgrounds. If you've taken my botanical course, we start off with making a background similar to this um, and then adding more collage and paint detail so little bits of this are popping through. Um, but they, these are great for starting off your bookmarks as well. You can just sort of change the angles and find areas of interest within that you can add details to. So what I'll do in this video is I'll um, I'm going to get a few bookmarks ready and show you how I add another couple of layers to them. I've got, so I have these pre-cut out. This is mount board and in America I think it's called mat board but it's just basically a thick piece of card that's not that bendy is what you're looking for. Um, like this one here, I had done a watercolour paper which wasn't that thick and I've just cut it out but it's a bit flimsy. It would have actually been better if I glued it on to a piece of card, I think. So depending on the paper you've got, I mean, this is painted directly onto the mount board, so I wouldn't need to, to glue that to anything. But if you've got thinner papers like this, you would need to glue that to something because it's too floppy for, for a bookmark. And this is the tea bag paper from... Jane Monteith I practiced with in my last video, the botanical uh, leaves. So I haven't actually tried gluing it and seeing if it goes transparent when you put the glue on and what it's, what it's like when you add pen details and stencils. So I'd quite like to test out this paper um, while I'm doing this project. So that'll give me... And then I've got jelly papers I'm going to use for... So that, I mean, you think that's a rubbish print, but then when you put the this one, it's just, you know, it's quite a lovely graphic design. So I like to buy mount board that has a colour on the back of it and that just is a little bit of a time saver so it saves me having to paint the back of the, the bookmark and I think it just looks a little bit more professional. Um, so these are cut to a certain size. I bought um, these cello bags for if I'm going to be selling these in shops or markets just to keep them clean a bit easier to display so they I measured that and to, to fit inside it the size I've gone for is four centimeters by 17 centimeters but you know there's no rules you can make these any size you want and um, but that's the size that, that fits this particular sleeve that I got on Etsy now I'll try and find the, the link and put that in the show notes for you Okay, so the easiest way to find your bookmark for gluing on, so I've cut a mount that's 17 by 4, and you can see that one is slightly 
off. So what I do is I find the shape I want. Did I say it was that way? Yeah, so more of an angle, I think. And then I just sort of put my bookmark on top and then move that away so that I've got the exact size that I need. Um, because sometimes if you're using the stencil, the this cut out and is slightly off, then you're going to end up with a little bit of gap at the side, and it doesn't look so good. I'm just going to cut that out with either scissors or a knife. Okay. Then you've got your card and just check that it fits. That seems pretty good. So you can either just use a glue stick or, I mean, if you've got PVA glue, whatever, whatever glue you've got, don't go out and buy anything special, but I do like matte medium glue. Okay, so I've got some matte medium glue and I've got an old credit card. I'm just going to paint on the white side of the, the bookmark. And then lightly on the, the back of the paper. And line it up. And when it's wet, it will stretch the paper a little bit, especially this is like a newsprint. So it will stretch a bit. But if it's a little bit bigger, we can easily sort that. So I'm just working from the middle and pushing the paper out to the edges. This was the tea bag paper, so let's have a look at this one. I wanted to see if these areas that don't have paint will go transparent when I put the glue on, so I just want to sort of capture a bit of that to see if it does work. Okay, I'm going to try gluing down that one to see how it works. A little glue sheet here. It's only a thin piece of paper, so you don't need that much glue. Just and I think because it's so thin, I'm not going to um, put it on both sides. The edges are very important to make sure they're stuck down so they're not going to come away. I'm just pushing out any bubbles with the wet brush. And it does appear to have gone transparent, so you can see the white underneath that really clearly. Well, that's good to see. Because I normally use the wet strength tissue paper, um, but I just wanted to see if this had... Especially the fact that you can wet it and it doesn't disintegrate um, like this. Uh, and you can wash it if you're using it for eco dyeing or something. So it seems to be quite a strong paper. Yeah, that's quite nice. I'll let that dry and see if the wrinkles come out of that. So I had a friend um, on Instagram who is from South Africa and she's coming over to England to visit her her dad for his 80th. And she said could ages ago could she get some bookmarks to to give to them um so i'm just getting around to it now but these are the colors she wanted the sort of golds and blues and teals 
So I had this spare from an old project, so I'm going to work with this one and try to sort of recreate some of the ones that I did before that she's seen what she liked. See if I can get a few out of this board. So these were done last summer, so you know I always keep these type of things because I will I know I will use them eventually. For different projects, different ideas. Yeah, really pretty. I like that. I don't know if you've noticed, but I am a bit of a messy worker. <laughs> right, so uh, what I'm going to do is just take the edge of this. There's like little bits that are coming away. So just taking your, I get these nail files that are quite rough and they seem to work well for this job. So I'm just filing down the way. Most days in woodwork will come back to you. Okay, so that's us back again. Um, I finished off the bookmarks last night. I, I did quite a lot after I finished filming. I just carried on sticking on jelly um, prints and also just cutting up some of the old um, the mount board paintings that I had. So I've got quite a lot to work with here. So I usually do this, like I, I tend to do a big batch at a time when I'm making the bookmarks and just work. Um, between all of them at the same time and just keep building the layers. So that's the bookmarks I've got I, and they're all on my board and I've filed the edges and just sort of smoothed the, the corners and I think that looks quite nice, just gives it a nice sort of framing. I will be painting the back of these, the ones that have not got the dark background. But yeah, I think it's worth taking the time to do that extra bit of filing just to smooth them off. Um, so I've got a selection of stencils here. Ones that are my favourites. I've got more over here. Each other. So I'll show you how I do that. I, I've got sponges. So these are actually like the Snazaroo base painting sponge. They, they come in a, a round circle. And I just cut them in half. They can be washed and reused. So, but the density of these works really well for the stencils. And then I've just laid out a few colours of paint that I like to sort of some dark, some light, so I can get some contrast. I'm going to try some gold. So I quite often just keep using the same sponge so you're getting a bit of a mixture of the colours so they're not straight out of the tube. It's quite nice to just take the other side of the sponge and then do a lighter version of that colour and then just sort of blend it like an ombre effect. Oh, 
right? And I just like to blend it with a different color at the top. Sort of softly merge into the next bit. So that's quite strong there. Um, quite an organic shape that so I kind of want to continue that feel on this one Had to wait till filming in the evening today because we're having a little bit of a heat wave in the north of Scotland, which is pretty unusual for us. I think it's the whole of the UK, but I don't know how you guys that are living in hot countries get any work done. I had to go and sit and read my book in the sun this afternoon because it just was so hot in the studio. I thought, nope, let's just take advantage of this weather. So it's actually still quite warm in here, but a bit more bearable. That's quite pretty. Okay. So yeah, so this is what I do. I usually just stick a like a Netflix on or something and just get into the zone and it works. Um just it's quite meditative. Got the door open. I don't know if you can hear the little birds in the background. Quite peaceful.
Okay, so as you can see, I added quite a lot of layers, stencils over stencils on these ones. Um, so the next part for me is to work back in with coloured pencils to sort of de define areas and also um, I use pens so I've got a combination of gel pens, Posca pens, this one is a pen touch gold and a thick Posca pen here so I have a variety there. I'm just going to start freestyle, just drawing design on top of the um, stencils and the jelly print that's beneath. And these white highlights can really pull a design together. Just following the line of um, stencil to sort of highlight different marks. Quite intuitive, just way in. I'm just intensifying the green in that area there, just to sort of pull it out a bit more. There's certain lines and marks that become part of your language that you often do and you'll start to recognise it coming through in different elements of your work the more that you do things. Okay, so that's all the pen details added to the bookmarks. Hope you enjoyed watching as I uh, embellish these. So the next part is I've got a hole punch here and I'll just show you how to make the hole for 
um, for the tassel. So you just got to decide which is the top and which is the bottom of your bookmark. And then I just look to where the hole is. There's probably easier ways of doing this. But... And then before I pull it down, I sort of hold it. And then you get your bookmark in the middle. So I'm just going to paint the back of these ones that I haven't got the, the back in. So it has some paint that I've been using before, a dark sort of blue colour. So I'm just going to uh, just go over the back of these. I need to do my couple of coats. I'm just going to finish the edges off with a little bit of copper paint, just so I think it looks a bit more professional. Okay, so that's the bookmarks finished. All I've got to do now is pick some colours for the tassel. So, this bit here is quite fun. So I hope you enjoyed watching my demonstration on how I make my handmade bookmarks um, with the old paintings and jelly prints. Um, so these are really fun to make and great sort of weekend project and, and ways to use up jelly prints or old paintings. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. If you'd like to watch another one, the link is up here. And if you'd like to sign up to my newsletter to hear all about new videos or courses I've got coming out, click the link here. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.